Hello designers, this is Angie from Raveners Design Academy. Welcome back if you're already subscribed and welcome here if you're new. Since last Tuesday's video was about lighting up a scene using daylight or sunlight, it only makes sense if I made this video on lighting up a scene at night. I'm using the same scene from the daylight render video by the way, but with added light fixtures. In V-Ray, there are four types of lights that are most commonly used, rectangle light, spotlight, omni light, and dome light. You can find them, among other light types, in the V-Ray lights toolbar. Rectangle light or plain light is basically a plane that you can draw, similar to the rectangle tool in SketchUp, onto any surface. Spotlight is a cone-shaped light, but unlike its sibling, the IES light, you can't really have a pattern for the light rays. Omni light is a star-shaped widget that emits light in 360 degrees, which is in every direction. Dome light is basically environment light with a brain. It uses an HDRI to work properly and can only cast light indoor if there are any openings into the space. I've already placed my light widgets where I want them to be. Like this light here, it has an Omni light widget inside. If I click it and launch the asset editor, I'll see the light's configurations, which are currently set to default. Under the cabinets, I opted to use a rectangle light in the shape of the light fixture component I'm using here. This too has the default settings and not tweaked. The spotlights in the ceiling have, yes, spotlight widgets. I've converted the light object into a component and placed the widget inside. This will save a lot of time when I copy the object to several areas on the ceiling. And this also is at default configuration. A quick look at the toolbar here, you'll see that these are the icons for the widgets that I've used so far. In the lights tab of the asset editor, I've turned off sunlight And I've also cleared all the textures under the environment rollout and settings from my previous video. I'll quickly test all the lights on their default settings, keeping in mind that the two huge background lights from the previous video are still there. In this test render over here, you can see that this section is already bright, to the point of confusing you that this render is during the day. The lights under the cabinets are also too strong, and they're causing a highlight burn on the wall. And the emissive material on the spotlights is too dim. But if you look at the pendant light, it's actually not bad. The results from this test render aren't awful, but we need to get better results, so some work needs to be done. I'll start by adjusting the emissive material's intensity. Whoops. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. I'll set that to 3. This is bright enough. These are the lights from the daylight tutorial. I'll move them to the outside over here because I might need them later. I still need background light though, because I want it to look like there are more lights behind the camera, not just a wall. This helps give the illusion of the space being bigger than that one corner I'm rendering.
That's why I'm opting to use two sphere lights out of the camera's view. And I'm placing them at different heights to give variation to the shadows cast by them. This helps with the realism of that illusion. I'll start an interactive render, test these babies out. It's not so bright at this side of the counter anymore, but it's not too dark. I want to tweak those lights better before doing another test render. And I'm going to start over there with the rectangle lights. When I did the test render, these lights were too intense due to their proximity to the walls. So I'll turn down the intensity quite a bit to prevent, to prevent that burn from happening again. First, no light in real life is a perfect white. So to fix that, I'll use this color over here that I have saved. It's my go-to for lights in almost 90% of my scenes. Then, I'll cut the intensity in half. Set the rectangle itself to invisible because my components already have an emissive material and disable its effect on reflections for the same reason. For the spotlight, I'll use the same color but a little bit more on the white side since these widgets will literally flood the space with light and merge with all the other lights from the other widgets which might make the space look a little bit too yellow. Changing the penumbra falloff to smooth cubic will give the lights a more realistic effect as they fade into shadow or touch other objects. As for the shadow radius, this controls how harsh or blurred my shadows are. The penumbra angle controls how smooth your light cones fall off will be. The cone angle is how wide my light cone will be and the preview explains it better than what I'm saying right now. You'll also notice, if you're using V-Ray next, that the Spotlight widget is changing its shape as I adjust the settings. Now, I don't need to tweak anything else here, so I'll move on. My favorite light in this toolbar is the Omni light. Love how realistically it mimics all sorts of light bulbs depending on the settings I put in. So, keeping the decay as it is, I'll change the shadow radius to a 3. Now, make that a 5 because this light fixture isn't supposed to focus light like the spotlight does. There we go, all done for now. Oh, almost forgot about these two. Hello. I'll make these lights a little bit more yellow than the rest while setting them as invisible and not appear in any reflections.
Last but not least, I want to add in a dusky sky, which is a sunset sky, which I prefer more than a night sky as a dome light. The sky we have right now is a boring foggy grey. I want something a little bit more interesting. So let's go outside and delete these two. To add a dome light, just like almost every other light, I'll just click the icon and click where I want to place the widget. There we go. And the asset editor, the default dome light is a blue sky with clouds. Not what we need. I'll add a colorful sunset HDRI that I got from hdrihaven.com. It's gonna be linked down below. Now that the texture is loaded, you can see all the colorful lights emitted by it. Now these settings, like some others, I'll leave for a more in-depth tutorial, but for now I need to adjust the intensity a bit so it's bright enough, but not too bright that it washes out the details of the sky. See, 3 is too bright. But 2 is perfect. Another test render is now in order to see what we've been doing so far. Now let's compare. This is the last test we did, which is too bright. Now this is our new lighting. Doesn't look impressive, I know, but we're getting closer here. Baby steps. We're on the right track. The lighting is well distributed, but it was a bit too dim for my taste, and I don't like tampering with exposure too much because it tends to leave the render looking a little bit too flat. Also, I'll move this sphere close to the side and create a rectangle light over here, right behind the camera. This will give it an effect of having a camera flash on. On second thought, I'll move this sphere to the opposite side. The Omni light in the pendant is already bright enough in that corner, and adding the sphere this close will cause one side of the room to be way brighter than the other. Now let's set the light's intensity to 5, change its color, and as usual, make it invisible and disable its effect on reflections and specular. Yes, I want the image to look like it's taken with a flash, but I don't want it reflected everywhere. To balance that rectangle light in the background, I'll amp up the spotlight's intensity to 1500 or 1500. Run the interactive render to see what we're dealing with. Yep, nice, bright without being too bright.
So I'll click render and I'll show you. See that corner over there? Because it's the furthest corner in the room and it's between two cabinets, it's always a bit too dark. It needed some hidden lights in the past tutorial because once I place my deco objects on the shelves, there will be too much shadows happening right in the middle of the image. So I'll do the same thing here and I'll add a couple of soft hidden lights there now. The rest of the image has a bit of shadows happening here and there, but those shadows, I want them to be there. Yet, if we compare the before and after, you'll see that the image has improved by miles. There are less shadows, and the shadows that exist are natural and soft. When we render this with the clutter added in and the materials applied, it will look a bit darker, but realistic enough. Similar to the last video, I know I keep referencing it a lot, but if you haven't seen it, then you should. I'll add rectangle lights here with an intensity of 2 to brighten up the corner. I'll also change the color to match the rest of my lights and hide it. After it's all set up, I'll copy it to the other side of the corner. And done. I don't think there is anything more that we need to do for now. Always keep in mind, once the clutter and materials are added into the scene, it will be a bit darker, if not much darker, depending on the type of textures and the amount of clutter. If I take a look at my last test render, everything else seems to be well lit and I like the shadows. If you don't wish to re-render a scene, this color correction toolset over here comes in handy in editing a final render. My most used is the exposure rollout, especially the highlight burn slider, which I always slide all the way to zero. If I turn off my color corrections, you can see how much difference it's making. Next logical step is to give this a quick test render with all the clutter placed in, just to get a feel of what my final render will look like. This is not too bad. I've done another test render with materials and this is where I'm disappointed. You'll see what I mean in a second. The image is okay, it can be fixed in post-production with Photoshop, but that's not what I'm after here. First adjustment I made was that I changed my GI value to the default, which is 1, because it affected my dome light a little bit. And then I changed my glass materials refraction IOR to 1.00 instead of 1.60, so the light can show through the glass more clearly. I wasn't a big fan of the camera flash effect, so I'll mimic a doorway's light instead of that flash effect by moving the rectangle light over here, resizing it. and then creating another one here.
I'll scale the copy down a bit so it, they don't clip. And I'll also move the spheres to this side of it. There we go. Background light's intensity has been changed to 3 instead of 5. Pendant's Omni Light is changed to a bit of an orangey color and then copied that color to the background rectangle light and the sphere light. I also changed the spotlight's cone angle to 42 and the penumbra angle to 12. And here are the final results. Before, flat, dull, needs quite a bit of post reduction. And after, cozy, bright, doesn't need much work done in Photoshop. And that's it for today's tutorial. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you aren't so you get more videos like this every week. If you like my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That would really make my day. Thank you for watching and happy designing.